Right now on News 4 at 5, tragedy in Texas. Boom, 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 and I just ran as fast as I could. Several people are killed at a high school near Houston. We'll tell you who's in custody and what police found on the scene. Looks like we are getting into that rain for the start of the weekend. We'll have the latest on timing coming up. Plus, a child is grazed by a bullet while sitting in a car. Shooting of a child, uh, particularly a four-year-old, uh, is very, very concerning. We have the latest on the investigation as Buffalo police work to find the shooter. News 4 at 5 starts right now. Live in high definition, this is Western New York's news leader. Now, News 4 at 5. that we experienced an unthinkable tragedy at our high school this morning. I was scared for my life. Nobody should go through this. I told her mom there, there are gunshots. I heard four shots. I saw some girl, she had a, you know, she got shot in the kneecap, I guess. I just ran as fast as I could to the nearest forest so I could hide. Tragedy strikes another high school, this time in Santa Fe, Texas. Good evening, everyone. I'm Don Postal. And I'm Jackie Walker. At least 10 people were killed and several others hurt during a shooting at the high school. Courtney Zubowski has the latest from Texas. Students were in their first period classes when the shooting started. I was really, really scared. And I was, I was struggling to keep calm. I heard so many people saying that, like, there was gunshots and that like people were dead and I didn't know what to think. I was like shaking. My anxiety was, it was bad. Someone pulled the fire alarm and students ran for their lives. This sophomore went to a nearby forest for cover. I shouldn't be going through this. That's my school. Like this is my daily life. I shouldn't have to feel like that. Soon after the shooting, police took 17 year old Demetrius Pogorchis, a student at the school, into custody. He gave himself up. And a minute at the time, they didn't have the courage uh, to commit the suicide that he wanted to uh, take his own life earlier. Senior Wesley Hill knows him from driving class. I didn't have any problems with him. I thought he was a cool guy. He was an interesting guy. He was very, very smart. After the shooting, search teams found pipe bombs and pressure cookers, both inside the school and nearby locations. Because of the threat of these explosive items, community members should be on the lookout for any suspicious items. Parents rushed to the scene after receiving an emergency alert from the school district. Just really scary. Really, really scary. It's like a free for all. Oh, and, and what's the purpose? This morning's shooting comes as students were looking ahead to summer vacation, which starts in just two weeks. Courtney Zabowski, CBS News, Santa Fe, Texas. And that was Courtney Zabowski reporting. And Jeff Glore will have the latest on this school shooting coming up on the CBS Evening News. Now we're continuing the following breaking news tonight out of Manhattan. We broke this story at News 4 at 4. One of the three executives of the LP Simonelli company has pleaded guilty in federal court to two of the counts he was indicted on in relation to the Buffalo Billion. We have more information now on the plea taken by former LP Simonelli executive Kevin Schuler. He took that late this afternoon in Manhattan. Uh, Schuler pleaded guilty to one count of wire fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. He faces up to 40 years in prison and up to $500,000 in fines when he's sentenced. Schuler and two other executives had been accused of working with the man who was then the president of SUNY Polytechnic and to rig bids. And that ultimately awarded L.P. Simonelli the contract to construct the Solar City plant on South Park Avenue here in Buffalo. Well, back here, a little girl is now in serious condition after police say she was grazed by a bullet. Police say this four-year-old girl was sitting in a car when she was hit. News 4's Rachel Monjovi has the latest developments tonight. Rachel? Donna Jackie, we first told you about this shooting last night. Police tell us it happened just after 10 p.m. on LaSalle Avenue near the intersection of Comstock Avenue. Authorities say the four-year-old girl was sitting in a car with her mother when she was shot. A bullet grazed the side of her head. We're told she was not the intended target. She was taken to Sisters Hospital but is now at Oshai. 
of the children's. The family sent us a few photos of the little girl. The family said she underwent surgery to remove the bullet fragments. She is now in stable condition in the ICU. Police are still looking for the person responsible. Mayor Byron Brown talked to us earlier today and said this kind of violence will not be tolerated. Any shooting is one too many. Any homicide, as we always say, is one too many. Uh, quite fortunately, this is not that type of situation. We will not rest until we uh, can try to find the individual or individuals that were responsible for this. The family has set up a GoFundMe page to help with medical expenses. A link is on our website, WIVB.com. The mother of the child works for Kaleida Health. We are told Kaleida employees can donate their vacation time to the family while they are out on medical leave. Rachel Monjovi, News 4. Police are looking for a young boy. They say he's been missing now for 24 hours. 12-year-old Arian Banks was last seen yesterday afternoon near the Waterfront Elementary School. Banks is 5 foot 4, 160 pounds. Police say he was last seen wearing a blue polo shirt, baggy jeans, and white sneakers. He also had a black backpack with him. Police are asking you to call 911 if you think you know where he is. The verdict is guilty. The month-long federal trial against members of the Kingsman Motorcycle Club is now over. The jury found the three defendants guilty of all their charges, ranging from racketeering to murder. Two of the defendants conspired to kill two fellow club members back in 2014. News 4's Jen Schantz has more on this verdict. Jen? Andre Jenkins was convicted in Niagara County for the 2014 shooting deaths of club members DJ Zemanski and Paul Maui. Today, federal prosecutors were able to prove he didn't do it alone. Lockport native and former National Club president David Perk was also found guilty of murder and gun possession along with Jenkins. Prosecutors called Jenkins Perk's weapon. Jenkins was also serving a life sentence without parole for the killings. Now he'll serve federal time too. Jurors also found a former regional president, Timothy Enix, was involved in the racketeering conspiracy. He could spend the next 50 years in federal prison. FBI special agent in charge said today this all spanned from the Kingsman's decision by its leaders to move from a simple motorcycle club to a criminal enterprise. Today's verdict is a relief for the people impacted by the acts of violence committed by the Kingsman. The Kingsman leadership not only voiced a desire to turn their club into a one percenter uh, gang, but they acted on that desire. With their intent to become one percenters, they were telling everyone that they do not want to be included in the 99% of riders who are law-abiding citizens. David Perg could spend the rest of his life in federal prison for the crimes. Timothy Enix, as I mentioned, could spend up to 50 years behind bars. All three defendants will be sentenced September 25th. Jen Schantz, News 4 at 5. And straight ahead in two minutes, guilty. Hear why the Erie County District Attorney says the anchor bar getaway driver help convict himself. And coming up at 5.30, we have continuing coverage on that arrest made after a sacred statue was smashed in Buffalo. We'll tell you why a hate crime charge has been filed in this case.